ideas and views beyond the mainstream media. And it is that while the lethality, the lethality of their power is greater than ever, their capacity to impose control over the politically awakened masses of the world is at a historical low. Namely, in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people. Literally, it was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. The smoke in the air of our Concord bridges and Pearl Harbors is always smelled first by the farmers who come from their simple homes to find the fire and fight. But if you embark on instituting a society where government protects you from yourself, you're in big trouble, and that's what they're doing. That's all government is, is force. I mean, do you have a choice about paying Medicare taxes? This government uses force to mold behavior or mold the economy. They've overstepped the bounds, and they violated the whole concept of our revolution and our Constitution. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Freedom Link Radio here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. I'm Joe Joseph. Along with me is Tim Watts, and our guest tonight is our good friend Popeye from FederalJack.com and Down the Rabbit Hole. And... <laughs> Before the show tonight, Timmy and I were like, oh, man, what the heck are we going to talk about? Oh, we'll figure something <laughs> out. <laughs> and good gracious. Uh, uh, it's amazing how these, um, how all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all this news pops up. Yeah, and then the floodgates of news just Oh, opened, good it? night, Irene, man. And, you know, folks, <laughs> you have to wonder why news comes out at certain times. That's the first thing. I always wonder that. Why does the, this particular piece of news, why is it released now? So let's get right into it, shall we? The headline on Drudge. <laughs> and all I have to say to this is... <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Obama's get... literary agent, 1991 booklet. Born in Kenya and raised in Indonesia and Hawaii. As if, you know, as, as if anybody in the alternative media needed any validation. You're a birther. Oh, <laughs> come on now. Come on now. Yes, I am. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because as a vet, you, you, when you take that oath, you take it for life. And, you know, part of our Constitution says specifically that you have to be a natural-born American citizen to be president of the United States. It's really not that hard to understand or to figure out. And there's been plenty of evidence up to now to show us that he's not a natural-born American citizen. But why is that important? Why is it important? Because if... Sarcasm if, added, if, by the way. If we can get someone within Congress... And I'm hoping there's somebody with cojones to be able to do this. And it's really up to us, folks, to give them the cojones, you know, whether it's with a nail bat or with, uh, with, with just calling them and being a pest. It doesn't matter. But the fact is, is that we need to get this guy out. And why do I say that? Everybody says, oh, well, you know, then you got Biden. Eh. Well, because if you even have Biden... All of the stuff that Obama has done up to now is null and void. And, and he defrauded the American people by lying about who he is, where he was born. That's a treasonous act. So I think a public hanging would be necessary <laughs> if convicted. I'm serious, man. I mean, like, chop, chop, square style in Saudi Arabia. Just Ooh. like right, right in Riyadh. But 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 who would we get to to possibly run the gallows? Let me think. Um, mm, that's a tough one. Who would do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm thinking that um, I'll put my name in the hat. Do you yeah. realize that every, when every new president comes in, right? Um, they they reestablish like all the old executive orders from the previous putts that was in there. 
Yep. And so that would, if he got out, not only would that null and void everything he's done, but all the stuff that's been since little Georgie Porgie putting in pie his eight years, okay, that stuff too. All those executive orders would be because Obama signed in executive orders uh, continuing all of Bush's executive orders. Exactly. Exactly. Can you look at the enormity of that, though, Popeye, what you just said, though, the enormity of if you if you rescind everything that's happened during the Obama administration and everything from the Bush administration, holy shit, think about where that takes us. It Is takes that? us back to before 9-11 when we were oh, still that free. Incredible? I mean, yeah, well, yeah. that would only be very temporarily. Let me say this. It'll only be temporarily because all it'll take is the next person, the next puppet to get in there and reaffirm everything that he'd done. So, I mean, that, that's all well and good. But this is what makes me think here. Okay, so this news comes out, which is very damning. And it really um, solidifies what Sheriff Joe's doing down in, in Arizona, in Maricopa County. And um, A, Breitbart was killed over this. So the flag should go up to say, a real true investigation into Breitbart's death has to happen now because of this news and because of the shysty way he was killed. Because and of this news? His wait, 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 because of this news? I mean, like, the coroner dies, but that's not shady. No, it's not shady. The other guy, the guy that sees Breitbart die, right, or, or collapse in the street, he he's in fear for his life, so he goes into hiding. Yeah. But no, but, but it's he just died of natural causes, Joe. That's right. That's right. Gentlemen, and hey, 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 hey. gentlemen, these are all coincidences. Oh, I assure yes. you, gentlemen. <laughs> They're <laughs> all coincidences. Tim, I will sleep easy tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so we have all this evidence. We need somebody to step up, if not the American people, and demand justice. And I, I know, I, I know, the guy's half black. His mom was white. His dad was black. He's still human. Doesn't matter. One race. Remember? Remember? We got to get over this freaking left right paradigm, this false racial divide. It's time to, uh, to clean house. But what worries me is the reaction. What's the reaction going to be? You know? Uh, is this going to be tolerated? Or is there going to be an event to distract people? And that's what, that's what bothers me, is typically when news comes out like this, not soon after, there's some sort of event that follows. Well, NATO kicks off tomorrow. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that anything, there's so many things in flux and in play right now that can totally make his being a non-citizen a moot point. That's what I'm saying. So I, I don't know... You know, when you look at it, the timing, it was released today. Why was it released today? Why wasn't it released a long time ago when he got this information? Mm -hmm. You know, w what's the deal? Why, what's the strategy behind um, behind doing all of this? That That's the question I need to know. So, folks, if you go to Breitbart.com, you'll see that it's, it's his uh, main story. And it's also the, the, the front story. On Drudge, and this is a note from senior management. It says, Andrew Breitbart was never a birther. And Breitbart News is a site that has never advocated the narrative of birtherism. In fact, Andrew believed, and we, we do, as we do, that President Barack Obama was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, on August 4th, 1961. Bullshit. <clears throat> Yet, Andrew also believed that the complicit mainstream media has refused to examine President Obama's ideological past or carefully crafted persona he and his advisors has constructed for him. It is for that reason that we launched The Vetting, an ongoing series in which we explore the ideological background of President Obama and other presidential candidates, not to relitigate 2008, but because ideas and actions have consequences. It is also in this spirit that we've discovered and now present the booklet described below, one that includes a marketing pitch for a forthcoming book by the then young, otherwise unknown, former president of the Harvard Law Review. It is this evidence, not of the president's foreign origin, but that Barack Obama's public persona has perhaps been presented differently at different times. 
So isn't that, isn't that interesting how they put it out like that? Still politically correct. Here we have a birth certificate that's clearly been photoshopped. We have a selective service form that's clearly been photoshopped. A social security number from Connecticut when he was born in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And now this. What more evidence do you people need? Before you take action. And I'm not talking to, I'm not talking to the listeners of this broadcast. You're just being racist. I'm just being totally and completely racist. Yes, you're just being racist. I, I mean, it's, it has nothing to do with law or anything like that. Law. That's right. Don't go away, folks. When we come back, spy drones over Denver and uh, California food police taking away your raw milk at gun. Don't forget to vote, uh, vote up Freedom Link on uh, TalkStream Live. That's, uh, I put the link in the chat room for all the chatters. But you go to TalkStream Live, you can vote us up and, uh, you know, we rise up the ranking. I just want to. I, I just want to beat out Rush Limbaugh. That's all. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all there is. Thing, you know, you know? Know? I just want to beat out a little bit of Rush. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before the break, we were talking about Obama and the bombshell evidence released by Breitbart today. And you know, Timmy, you brought up a good point. Something that that a lot of people probably didn't notice. Why don't you tell the listeners during the break what, or that we what we well, talked yeah, about? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks break. very much. No, I'm just you know. The, the, the point, the gist that I was getting to in our off-air conversation was the fact that this guy's a made man. I mean, they, he's been put into that position. I, he was groomed for this. But, but the, the other thing about that, the fact that he was put in there and there's someone pulling strings for him, the same thing can be said about what's going on in Chicago. Rom didn't belong to Chicago. I mean, there was, remember the big fight about, hey, how can this guy run for, you know, mayor of Chicago? He doesn't even live here, you know, and somehow, you know, he's just the mayor of Chicago. He somehow, he, you know, daily steps aside, he gets in. I don't know, you know, the, the, I'm just thinking both of them are, are put in place. But, you know, I, the story that you refer to about Obama, a lot of people might have saw this, but uh, I forget who the reporter was that was interviewing him. But uh, they were on stage, and there's this fly buzzing around the reporter's head. And uh, he, he kind of swats at it a few times, and then it goes around Obama. And Obama just sits there very calm, cool, and collected. And, and he just, out of nowhere, just s snatches his fly out of the air. Flicks it to the ground. But, I mean, it's no surprise. He doesn't look surprised at all. It's like he knew he was going to do it. It was effortless. Um, the point I was getting through to you guys, you and Pop, I was like, this guy's got some mad skills. Oh, I <laughs> thought you were talking like he's a ninja. Well, no, I've, I've heard rumors, you know, people you've seen. That him. he's a ninja? No, CIA. Is he friends with Ben Fulford? C CIA links and stuff like that. But I'm <laughs> telling you, who knows you know, what kind of training he's Wait, wait, hold on. Let, let's get something clear. Ben Fulford, <laughs> that guy, if that guy's not a co-intel op, he's Come just a on, moron. That guy, that no, guy dude, has some sway, baby. Him and guys like great. Dallas Goldbug and stuff, that yeah. the reason why they're so over the top is that's complete operative behavior, literally. <laughs> but but I'd almost I'd almost pay money to see Fulford speak Japanese because that's a hoot dude. <laughs> oh man. Watch it, on, watch it on YouTube, folks. I mean that stuff is great. And I hate to I hate oh, to, God, I just bust my my balls laughing at that. I hate to digress, but uh that crap is freaking <laughs> 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 Guy sounds like he's choking on a steak bone. <laughs> and, you know, with Obama, the, the Telegraph comes out. Now, this is um, Tim Stanley, Dr. Tim Stanley. He's a historian of the United States, and he wrote a, a biography of Pat Buchanan. That uh, had to be a freaking hot seller. But anyway, uh, uh, he, he wrote an article that says, Obama's literary agent says he was born in Kenya. How did the mainstream miss, miss this? I'm not even going to get into the article, but the question is very interesting and entertaining because, oh, how, how did the mainstream media miss the fact that Sheriff Joe's uh, cold case posse goes and uncovers the really shoddy, really shoddy Photoshop job done to the birth certificate, the selective service form? I mean, huh? how did they miss that? Why? Because it's their man. Why else would they miss it? Just like they're probably going to miss this, too. As all of this evidence mounts, they're all going to miss it. And that's why it's so important that we all hold our non-representing representatives to account on this. I mean, we need a, an investigation that has already occurred 10,000 times before. <clears throat> yeah. But, and, 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 and really, what also we need is somebody to have the cojones to bring up uh, a trial. And not, not impeachment. 
Impeachment's too, um, I mean, we could, and it has to happen, but that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I want to see a full-blown um, Rosenberg trial, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, we haven't had something like that in a long time. And, you know, of course, it came to, after the fact, uh, they were patsies. You know, those poor guys went down for no reason, the Rosenbergs. But th this, we can actually get one of these people for clearly lying about who he was and getting the highest office in the land. So I, I, I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm hoping that something comes of this because this has really got me pissed off. <laughs> Well, you know, it's, 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 if, if the rumors are true about him with his connections and stuff like that, you think back, the CIA then has had the, held the presidency in this country since uh, uh, Reagan, since H.W. Uh, Bush was vice president. That's right. Make him swing like Mussolini. You ever see the way he was hung, <laughs> put on display? I mean, that's... You have, he's you have a fascination with this stuff, dude. <laughs> well, you know why? Because you know why crime is so low in the Middle East? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because they're yeah. they're they're barbaric and ruthless about when they they administer their punishment. Yeah, exactly. Because pe they are made an example of. Damn right. You know, and because of that, people are held to account. It's accountability, whether it's extreme or not. It's still accountability. So then, why hang him? Why don't we just give him to the Pakistanis? Ooh. Well, why do that? That that that's too. I kind. would give him to the herders and the farmers that lost children. Yeah, there you go. Due to drone strikes, and be like, "Would you like the person yeah. responsible for your child's death? Here, have fun. Ooh. Bye. Ooh. Here's a large pile of rocks to the throw. Have a nice day." <laughs> I didn't think about that. That's kind of that's cool. Yeah. You know, the disembow the the public disemboweling and lighting the entrails on fire. That's not half as cruel as that. <laughs> and everybody else that's involved, Panetta, anybody, and going back to the Bush administration, <laughs> to any of the dirtbag lawyers that think it's okay to blow little kids up with bombs, and, well, it's all in the name of protecting people for the war on terror. So, no, everybody. They should all be given to those people that have been affected like that and let them, you know, just give out their own justice. And oh, that's it. Call it a day. Miss Milky the Clown in the chat room just had a... Something better, he said. She, she she put move him into Fukushima Reactor Four as a support pillar. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's a good <laughs> one. Okay. Good. All right. Well, but that support pillar ain't gonna last too long. <laughs> uh, I sure won't. I mean, you see how he's built. That radiation is gonna eat him alive. That's a daggone shame. Well, folks, I mean, the big thing is put pressure. We have to put pressure on our on our elected officials to do their due diligence and their job. It all comes down to that. Now, in other news, in other news, the spy drone, uh, everybody, I don't know if you've heard about this near midair collision over Denver, but... Um, By the way, um, we called this not too long ago. Yes, yes we did. did. Yes, yep. we did. It was like a week ago, wasn't it? Like a week, week and a half ago? Yeah, like two point. weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, barely. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Now, this mystery object, quote, quote, thought to be a military or law enforcement drone flying in controlled airspace over Denver almost caused a catastrophic midair crash with a commercial jet Monday. Now, this is no goose. The pilot of a Cessna jet radioed air traffic controllers to warn them that a, quote, remote controlled aircraft had flown past his plane far too close for comfort. Quote, something just went by the other way about 20 or 30 seconds ago. It was like a large remote control aircraft, the pilot said. Uh, the craft was reported as being at 8,000 feet above sea level or about 2,800 feet above the ground. At the time the pilot reported seeing it, it did not show up on radar. The type of drones used by NATO typically fly at 10,000 feet and below. Other tactical military drones can fly uh, <clears throat> up to 18,000 feet. Uh, Denver 9 News has reported that the FAA is investigating and uh, that th they describe this as potentially extremely dangerous. Wait, do we, did you see the news report on this, though, the video? Well, yes, and, and when we come back from break, we're going to play a clip. Uh, this is a news piece. Wait till you hear the audio. Oh, yeah. Did yes. you hear the excuse? Well, it could be a remote oh, control aircraft, really? They, yeah. You can fly remotely modeled airplanes at 8,000 feet? Well, no, no, no. It's 8,000 feet above sea level. It's 2,800 feet above the ground. So, yes, that's entirely possible. 
But we'll talk about this when we come back from break, and we're going to play this news clip, this whitewash of it. So don't go away, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. Folks, don't forget the email address, thefreedomlink at centurylink.net. That's thefreedomlink at centurylink.net. Joe Joseph, Tim Watts, and Popeye here to bring you the crazy news that has gone, <laughs> gone down today and to think that Timmy and I were actually sweating the fact that we wouldn't have much to talk about yeah. tonight. Holy schmoly. Boy, were we wrong. Boy, and, and before the break, we were talking about these spy drones. And it's a near collision uh, over Denver. And... Um, I want to play the news piece now of this uh, this near collision and pay close attention to what they're saying and uh, what they attribute this to. This is very interesting. Uh, here, here we go. At some point in time, today, or not. Don't you just love when the player freezes up? I hate it. <laughs> I mean, that's that timing is everything in show business. They say. Oh, gosh, you know, well, it's that dramatic <laughs> pause, you know, it's a dramatic pause. Yes. Pregnant pause, they call that. Yes. Uh, yes. Let me let me just get through the sponsor message. If I could, that would be very good mm -hmm. since I had to yeah, be fresh player. Yes, that's always good. <laughs> but uh, one thing that's interesting is that at the end of this thing, you know, the anchor's like, uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's Sky over Denver, Denver is giving a lot of attention this week. In a moment, details on why certain aircraft are going to have a lot of people looking up tomorrow. First, though, to a mystery. The search for clues about a mystery object over Denver that nearly caused a mid-air collision. New tonight, Nine Wants to Know's Will Ripley has been looking into this since we got a news tip this afternoon. So, Will, what have you learned? Mark, we learned the FAA is launching an investigation tonight, and here's why. Take a look at this. This is live radar on flight aware. Com. You can see each of these planes which signify private and commercial air traffic around the Denver area. Now, as far as we know, the mystery object we're talking about did not show up on this radar yesterday, and investigators believe it could pose a serious safety hazard. A close call in the skies over Denver. Remote controlled aircraft or what? Something just went by the other way. A pilot called air traffic control when something flew past his plane. Stop. 20 to 30 seconds uh, ago, and uh, uh, yeah, it was like a large remote-controlled aircraft. This Nine Wants to Know animation based on radio transmission shows the corporate jet was 8,000 feet over Cherry Creek when the mystery object came close enough to make any pilot nervous. That's an issue because now we have something in controlled airspace that poses a danger. Former NTSB investigator and Nine News aviation analyst Greg Fite listened to the air traffic recordings. He believes the object could be one of three things. One, a military or law enforcement drone. Was this an unmanned vehicle that was part of some sort of law enforcement operation? Two, a remote controlled aircraft. Was this somebody that had flown a large model aircraft inadvertently into the airspace? And three, a large bird. It just caught the pilot's eye, so he believed it was an aircraft, but could have been a very large wingspan bird. Any one of those things could be catastrophic if it collides with an airplane. Just look at what happened three years ago on the Hudson River when a bird strike took down a commercial airliner. The threat is there from a collision standpoint. FAA spokesman Mike Fergus says investigators will talk to the pilot and look at other clues. Well, we'll do as much as we can here to try to track back what time it was to probably talk with some remote control you know, clubs, that type of thing. The mission now to identify that mystery object before another close call or worse. Tonight, we've been reaching out to our sources in local and federal law enforcement, also in the military, to find out if maybe there was a drone flying over Denver yesterday, but nobody has been able to confirm anything. We also called local airports and some model aircraft clubs who say they also hadn't heard anything, but they promised to look into this. So the mystery continues, but maybe more answers soon, Mark. One of those things that makes you wonder, Will. Yeah, you wonder, and it could be dangerous if it comes yes. close to a plane. Could be indeed. All right. Well, Ripley in the Information Center, Will. Well, what do you do about that? Oh, <laughs> hey, Joe. It's a wonder, guys. Yeah, hey, Tim. Hey, Joe. Golly gee, makes you wonder. You think it was a remote control airplane? No, I don't, you dick. I think it was a military drone being used by either the military, Border <laughs> Patrol, police, or whatever. What a moron. Uh. What a freaking moron. I just unscrewed my brain, and I'm in the media. Wow, guys, what do you think of that? <laughs> yeah, you know, or, or 
Yes, I think it's a, a large wingspan bird. Yeah. yeah. It could be a large wingspan bird. Yeah. You know what? A flipping griffin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, exactly. Joe, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you saw a bird the size of a predator drone? That's what I'm saying. These things, it's not exactly like a, long, a short wing. That's like a 30 foot wingspan. Yeah, if you see something that big, run. You got like a Pegasus? Yeah, run, run because it's probably. For a while, you know, it's not like he's not going to, you know, he's seen birds and stuff like that. It, it, this guy's been in the air as a pilot for a while, so I think he's going to distinguish a bird from a freaking drone. But come on, the news reporter knows better than the pilot with like 30 years' experience. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. K KEB in the chat room just said a pterodactyl, perhaps. That that's <laughs> what I was thinking, dude. The, the... A pterodactyl. That's exactly right. You I, think I... notice that though? No, no. Especially you know, no witness accounts of a pterodactyl. I mean, come on. Uh, you can't even see that, you know. So so you have this thing flying at eight thousand feet, and you know, to be quite honest with you, at twenty eight hundred feet above the ground. Could it be a remote control uh, airplane of sorts? Yeah, you know, chances are it might, it might be. No way, dude. There's no way some battery-operated remote RC plane is going to fly that high without radio interference. Ring, 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 ring. No Can way. I see it? <laughs> mm. It was a remote-controlled plane, all right. It just yeah. was model RC. <laughs> exactly. It to be from like a model RC club. Obviously not. I mean, but do you see the smoke screen, folks? Do you? Oh, yeah. do you you see how they're trying to do and, it? I mean, that story was, I was trying to text Joe to say he cut it at halfway. I mean, because that story goes, like, halfway through, it's all right, and then it just goes to shit, you know? <laughs> it's like you can <laughs> see the disinformation come out all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's bad. Uh, and here's That's a, my favorite part, though, Tim, is when he says, whoa, it could be a remote control airplane. You look at the I guy's know. face. Like, look at the video, Joe, when you're watching it. Look at the guy's face when he says it. The correspondent doesn't even believe what he's saying. I know. That kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? Kind of like uh, he's saying, oh, it could have been a UFO. Oh, yeah, the Martians are coming in. So in, in the form of large wingspan geese. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the form of large wingspan geese. That whole yes. thing went south when they got to point two. A mute, you know, a mute, they were good up to point one. Yeah. Well, they, because, but you see the lengths they go to to cover up the fact that there's already almost collisions with drones in the skies over the United States. So rather than be like, wow, you know, this is a serious problem. No, yeah. they're going to come out with huge mutant geese or somebody, some, you know, <laughs> dick with his RC plane. Just like, remember when there was a terror threat? You remember a couple months back? It was maybe a year ago now. They're going to use RC-controlled planes to oh, a yeah. capital yep. building. Yep. Really? Was, yep. Really? Yeah. Well, of course they are. Come on. I mean, that's just the way it is. It, it, you know, it, it, akin to the IRS uh, incidents. Oh, yes, this crazy yeah. guy flying his airplane. They're going to do it everywhere. Oh, gosh, he's single in, in the, airplane. The point of this exercise is, folks, think, you know, and most of this audience does, but, boy, you got to get those people at work and everybody else, you know, hey, put two and two together. Think about what they're saying in this story and how much absurdity is really there. I mean, it takes but two seconds to go, hey, yeah, this is a lot of crap. <laughs> it's, it's most certainly uh, a lot of crap. So you know, you'd, you'd think be, you'd think if it was Mothra flying around, somebody would have spotted that. Yeah, but you, you, <laughs> you know what's saying? sad. You know what's sad is how many people in the United States hearing this story are going to think that it's Mothra. Probably a good portion, I have to say. Well, if it comes off the nightly news, they you will. Know? Uh, well, it could have been a bird, really, you know. Mm, perhaps it was the uranium pure 32 explosive space modulator. <laughs> you know, what the heck? You know, you know how many people will will actually go and believe that because to them it's more comfortable for them to believe that uh, you know it could be some mutant super huge goose that could probably eat people rather than believe the reality of the situation that we shouldn't have drones flying overhead because look well, what. Happened. Dude, dude, it's a Fukushima goose. See, it's, it it's the radiation and it mutated. You know, that wouldn't surprise me. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at how all. Long, how long till we start hearing excuses like that? Well, you know, now, now I will say this. The, the tinfoil hat community might might well take that, that up as, as evidence. You know, this the Fukushima goose incident of Denver, 2012. That could be. You know, it could be because um, the Mayan... 
thing is starting to happen and, you know, it's starting to cause uh, these these hidden genes in the DNA sequence to activate and they all become giants again. I mean, it could be anything. Perhaps it was all the bullshit that comes out of Washington. It was just flying around in the air, and that's almost what collided with the plane. Well, if that's the case, we wouldn't be able to fly anything in the air. <laughs> our whole airspace would be yeah. covered with shit. So, yeah, it was, I, I personally think it was one of Ben Fulford's ninjas on a parachute. <laughs> And <laughs> he just missed the target. Yeah. But, folks, don't go away. The last segment of hour number one is coming up. And when we come back, we'll be talking about taking away your raw milk at gunpoint. You won't come down. You won't live. Dependablevoice.com. The homepage of OrionTalkRadio.com. And there you will find the chip-in banner. And we're running a promotion right now where if you donate $20 or more, you get a free T-shirt. That's right. You get a free T-shirt. And what a deal. I mean, how often? Yeah, 20 bucks for that T-shirt? It's actually worth it. So go ahead and donate today to Orion Talk Radio and help keep this Orion Talk Radio experience going and expanding. And uh, we're, we're here now talking about this California food police incident. And guys, uh, the L.A. County Health Enforcers, this is naturalnews.com, conduct door-to-door -door raw milk confiscation operations. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind that. Can you rewind that and say that one more time? They conduct what? Door-to-door -door raw milk, milk in, in as confiscation in, As in they go door-to-door -door in, like, neighborhoods? Open yes. up, man. Police want your milk. Get the... Dude, if someone came to my door, do you have raw milk? I'd be like, blow me and leave. Yeah, this is a nat natural news is re is is reporting this, and <laughs> this is in a bombshell revelation of the depth of the food police state that now exists in L.A. County, California. Natural news has learned that the L.A. County Health Department has unleashed door-to-door -door raw milk confiscation teams to threaten and intimidate intimidate raw dairy customers into surrendering raw milk products they illegally purchase and own, according to Mark McAfee. Both L.A. County and San Diego counties have attempted to acquire customers' names and addresses from Organic Pastures. Uh, that's OrganicPastures.com. For the sole purpose of sending food confiscation teams to customers' homes to remove the raw milk from customers' refrigerators. Using both phone calls and home visits, these teams intimidate customers and try to force them to give up their milk. These revelations have surfaced in a recorded Natural News interview with Mark McAfee. And uh, you can listen to it at NaturalNews.com. But are armed raids next, guys? I mean, seriously, wow. what, what's next? Well, you know? very, very timely, considering we just had, you know, Elvin Schlanger and uh, Melinda Olson and Liz Reitzig right. on this week, you know, with the Milk Freedom Writers. This is just out of control, dude, for real. It, it's, it's... No, for real, like, dude, if you had told me five years ago, right, that they'd be pretty much doing armed, and they have. Look what they did to, you know, the, the, the raw milk people already. They've been raiding them at gunpoint, the Amish farmers and everything. If you had told me this five, six years ago, I would have said, well, that's what's coming down the pike. But, you know, I think, I, I don't think it's going to get to that point now. It's like people, you tell somebody, hey, man, the raw milk guy got raided yesterday. And they're like, yeah, I know, I heard. And they yeah. don't get upset. Like, it's <clears throat> it's par for the course. No, exactly. And... What the hell happened, dude? What what the hell happened? What's going on in this country of ours? That's what I'm talking about. What the what is going on? Why are why is nobody upset about this? I don't know. And, How would and, you no, feel if someone came to your front door and said to you, "Do you have raw milk, Joe Joseph?" I well, I know, I <laughs> I know what would happen. Well, I mean, this just this just goes to show you just the the extent and the the extent and the depth of the police state. And uh, Ken from the Information Nation here on the Orion Talk Radio Network just skyped me an article. Utah school fined fifteen thousand dollars for accidentally selling soda during lunch. Oh, criminy! Oh no, not soda! Gosh, what are those kids gonna do? Oh. A Utah high school is learning the hard way that the government is serious about nudging students away from food it doesn't want them to consume. Davis High School in Salt Lake City area is having to fork over a whopping $15,000 in fines to the feds because it accidentally, it accidentally sold soda through a vending machine during lunch. Oh, what the hell is that all about? This is such bullshit. 
for real. Is, no, but I mean, what's the foundation? Is that like a religious thing or something? I mean, what the hell? Why can't they sell it through a... I mean, every school I've been to, they do that. What, yeah, what's all, special about Utah? It's the food police, Tim. This is that, that, that healthier eating crap. That's like right. the, the police take... The, oh, yeah. the, the food police taking away that kid's lunch a couple months ago and replacing it with nuggets. Yeah. Well, that's just pure insanity because after, you know, and Joe knows, well, Joe doesn't because he keeps his kids out of the public school system. But I had to send my kids through, and a lot of you people know what that's like. And a lot of the public school systems are hurting. So to, to slap them with a $15,000 fine for selling pop, I mean, Judas, freaking and, and according to the Blaze, federal law requires the school to turn off its soda machines during the lunch period, which is 47 minutes a day. And Davis High School did not turn off the machines in the lunchroom. However, the school didn't realize that there was another machine. Uh, it did turn off the ones in the lunchroom, but the school didn't realize that there was another machine in the school bookstore that wasn't being turned off. And when the food police realized it, the school was hit with a 75 cent per student fine for the duration of the offense. Wow. Now the school is going to have to cut money to the fine arts program to make now, up see, the cost. It's, it's, uh, of course. So see, That's what I'm getting at. Well, how stupid. But see, it's about money. That's all it's about. It's about sucking everything out of everybody in this freaking country. Oh, it just makes me so goddamn angry. Uh, it makes me angry too, the dude. The kids are going to suffer because the soda machine was on? How does that benefit them in any way, shape, or form? I would love to debate some douchebag government bureaucrat right now. I would love for him to try to explain yeah. this to me. This really pisses me off. Fifteen grand from a school that can't afford it. Yeah, screw the kids and their education. That's not important. We're the federal government. We're going to commit. And who the hell is the federal government to be telling them yep. there's a goddamn federal law, Joe, to turn the soda machine off? Are you freaking stuff. kidding me? <laughs> no, isn't it crazy? It's so unbelievable. It's, it's nice that we reach a, a national audience. So to, to those of you in Utah, Judas, frickin' priest, get off your ass and make some noise about this because this is outrageous. But this is a national law. This is a federal law. And unfortunately, because, and see, this is, this is the reason why Ron Paul wants to take the Department of Education and trash it. Because the federal government has no place in your child's education. They just don't. But the problem is, is the state and local governments have been so um, uh, co-opted. Pussified. Because of federal funding and and because of the threat of the loss. Where the, where's the county sheriff? Where's the county sheriff? Where's somebody? I mean, where's the state? This is just, this is out of control. Let's everybody remember the basic rule, okay? Go back to like eighth grade civics class. Does anybody remember what the basic friggin' rule is? The states give the federal government power. This is out of goddamn control. It is oh. out of control. It is out of control. And, and unfortunately, we're not going to have any change as long as we continue to live in a lawless society. And that's exactly what we do. This is anarchy, folks. You may not think it because there's an appearance of the rule of law. However, the rule of law does not exist in America because if that was the case, then it would be consistent from the top on down. But as you've heard tonight in hour number one, we've had... Uh, drones in the sky almost causing a mid-air collision. We have a president, a sitting president, that sh is ineligible to be president of the United States, and yet nothing happens to him. And in the state of Utah, we have a uh, soda machine, a school being fined $15,000 because the soda machine in the bookstore is left on during the lunch period. And, uh, oh, yeah, and uh, this confiscation of raw milk, not just happening in California, but also in the state of Minnesota, as you heard on Tuesday evening when we had uh, uh, Mr. Schlangen on talking about how he's got to go to court on Monday yep. to defend himself because he provides uh, organic food and wholesome food to uh, his community. What the hell kind of world do we live in? And it's interesting because this brings me back to that clip that I played on Tuesday, the Paul Harvey clip. And, you know, I, th I think I may pay play it again next hour. And the only reason why is because it's so unbelievably accurate. So unbelievably accurate. 
and and I mean that was first that was first aired in 1965, and then, like I said, he he had made different changes to it over the years, but the 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 concept, the 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 core of it remains the same. And the one thing is, you know, we got to turn things upside down. What's forward is backwards. What's right is wrong. What's truth is not truth. And so on and so forth. It's unbelievable, folks. Do we live in bizarro world? Seriously, I woke up and we're in effing bizarro world. Yeah. We're exactly not in 1984. Right. We surpassed that about six miles ago. Yeah, no, I totally agree, dude. Yeah. Totally agree. Uh, you know so ample is to, to impress upon folks is the two words, you know, or, uh, the two acronyms, SOPA and PIPA. And hopefully folks get it because we made such a big stink. Everybody together made such a big stink. They had to backtrack. They had to retrace. And they had, sure, they came at us with something else. But the point is people got up and they made a goddamn stink about something. And they, they wrote their congressman and they got pissed off. But, you know, once a year doesn't cut it, folks. We it, it, it's to the point of madness now. It's like do it every goddamn day. Send them a freaking letter every day and say f you. You know, do your freaking job. This is what we expect of you today, and and that's probably almost what we got to do. If not a daily, a weekly basis. All right, here's what we expect of you this week. Don't screw it up. But you know, this once a year stuff. We just need to. Uh, people need to get a lot more active. All well, the you, time. you know, you know how we can solve things. Here's here, here's two here's two solutions real quick. Term limits. And take the money out of politics. All these politicians, no more golden parachutes, no more other crap. They, you know, their wives get a paycheck. No, none of this crap. Okay, none of this at all. No more, nothing. You make thirty thousand dollars a year as a congressman or a senator, and when you're done, that's it. You don't get anything else. You get you get a gold watch maybe, and a thank you and a certificate. And, and you don't get to become a lobbyist. You don't get to use the skills you you learn. No, it's against the law for you to yeah. do that. Actually, that's no. right. Hour number one is done. Hour number two is on the way. When we come back, I'll play that Paul Harvey clip again just to blow your freaking mind. Uh, Europe is rocked by Spain's banks collapsing. Oh, and the queen of disco. It's hour number two of Freedom Link Radio, everybody. I'm Joe Joseph, along with Tim Watts and our guest tonight, Popeye from federaljack.com and the broadcast down the rabbit hole here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. And before the break, I was telling you about... Uh, the broadcast or the, the the piece by Paul Harvey entitled "If I Were the Devil," and it was originally aired in 1965. And we were talking about how everything's backwards. You know, we live in a lawless society. That what's up is down, and left is right. Everything's backwards and opposite. So I want to play this for you again, just because. The, how do people know? How could it be that they know what's going to happen 30, 40 years in advance? And I'm sure that people will be saying the same thing about us. And I'm not just talking about the host of this broadcast, but of all of you listening out there tonight, I'm sure they're going to say the same thing about you 30 or 40 years from now. Here it is. If I were the devil, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. The. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. 
If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography, Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey. How do you like that, guys? I mean, it, it, you just can't get any more spot on than that. And that's exactly what's going on today. It truly is. Somewhat very prescient for 1965, eh? Yeah, yeah. And that... that uh, it just it just kills me that people know this and they just they just don't they just don't do it you know they just don't ugh, ugh they just don't do anything about it they just sit around joe unfortunately many people do not know anything about this at all it's unbelievable how many people do not know and that's because they have been dumbed down by design and the ones that do know and don't do anything the ones that you're referring to i have no use for them and like sam adams said may uh history forget you are our countrymen i mean if you're not going to do anything about it and you're just going to sit there and suckle off the teat of tyranny then be gone with you dirt bags damn the dirt bags full speed ahead <laughs> so uh, you guys hear about the Kennedy? Uh, oh please! Uh, yeah, R RFK the oh, third. Hey, I heard they they went through a twenty four hour drive through. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, service, you know, blood work, everything, and they they get results twenty four hours. Huh? I mean, band <laughs> in out done. I mean, it's almost like um, it's almost like a, a ninja autopsy. Oh, that's <laughs> Fulford's ninjas work for the coroner's office. You didn't know that, did you? No. Okay, that explains it. So that's Ben right. Fulford was the coroner. Okay. It's like uh, what do you what do they call that? Um, what what do they call that Japanese cuisine where they you know they like uh, they chop chop and they're just putting it all together. What the heck do they call that? That's um, oh geez now. Stir fry, yeah, like that. You know where they're just on that. You, you put you, all that stuff in the bowl and they throw it on the skillet and it. That's what they did, man. I mean, they just totally and, and yeah, it, it's I, Mongolian barbecuer. That's exactly right. Because have you ever noticed anybody that 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 may like crime shows? There's a um, there's a show that's been on Discovery for quite some time now called Doctor G. And uh, she is the coroner down in Orlando, Florida. And she She's continually talks about, well, she always call, talks about, you know, well, we have to wait for the toxicology to come back. And it ends up being like six to eight weeks later that it yeah, comes yeah. back. So how did they, wh where's the express lane? That's yeah. why I said they, they went through the 24-hour quickie, you know, coroner's express lane and, you know, got her results back. Hey, it's a suicide. That's not shady. Nothing to see here. Just another Kennedy that died under shady circumstances, but there's mm -hmm. nothing to see here. But she no, was just, exactly she was just right. the wife, Popeye. Yeah. You, you know how guys say stupid stuff after sex to their wives? Or 
at the time maybe girlfriend, do you think she n does not have or had knowledge of many things that perhaps people didn't want out? Just saying. <laughs> All I know is, boy, man, it, there, uh, the the Kennedys have had a really bad run. Yeah, mm. <laughs> you know, I, I think they got a really well, bad run going. Not just them. Remember, uh, well, we, which gosh, I'm trying to remember which Bush it was. Was it Marvin? The the, the uh, remember the uh, the was it the maid? Or the uh, the house cleaner that's like crushed in front of the garage by one of the cars. Oh yeah, was that that was an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. because I hate when things happen, you know. All of these families, you know, from the uh, so so called upper crust, uh, we call them uh, basically uh, criminals. <coughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, boy, I tell you what, what what laundry, what dirty laundry these families have. Oh my, oh my, oh my. But you, and we let these people run our country. Let, let me ask the two of you a question. Just sit down and think, and just think about this for a minute. If you have like. I don't know, like 15 or 20 people in the same family all die under really weird circumstances. Do you think maybe, just maybe, something's going on? Hmm? Maybe? Uh, no, not at all. You don't think there's a, you think it's coincidence? It, yeah. Absolutely. You don't think it's a pattern? That's what I was going to say. And too. speaking of coincidence, when we come back from break, we're going to talk about some coincidence that Donna Summers was talking about before she passed away. As well as the uh, coincidence, as far as, you know, how Spanish banks are failing and EUs and chaos. Oh, and, you know, the coincidence that maybe there was a nuclear reactor in the Kodak building. <laughs> yeah, one. so we'll talk about all that when we come back from break. You're listening to the Freedom Link on the Orion Talk Radio Network. This camera is awesome. It should... Welcome back, folks. The Orion Talk Video Network has some great quality programming all day long. Jeez, we're at 12 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. You've got Nuked Radio with the rad chick, Christina. And you've also got The Edge with John Stokes immediately following that from 1 to 3 p.m. on Monday through Friday here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Joe Joseph here with, with Popeye and Tim Watts. And we, my friends... Move on to the next topic, and that is the queen of disco, Donna Summers, thinks that she was killed by 9-11 particles. What do you think? Well, if she was anywhere near 9-11, you know, and, and br breathed in any of that toxic dust from New York, yeah, that's a you betcha. That's a you betcha for me. I mean, look how many people have died there already. Go watch a movie called Dust to Dust. Yeah, health that's a great movie. Of 9 11 You'll see some of the most disturbing stuff, like mm. a school right down the street. They didn't even bother cleaning it out, and there was actual still dust inside the air vents and everything. Yeah. And this one whole class all has uh, form some form of uh, leukemia or another. They're well, all Christy getting cancer. Todd Whitman said it was okay, though, Popeye. She said it was she okay. should be arrested, dude. Right. That woman should be arrested. One right of the most criminal now. things ever done in this country's history. Yes, and Bush and anybody in his administration that was, you know, uh, is passed the word down. I mean, obviously he's a war criminal and all those other things, but just for that day alone, that's criminal yeah. what they did to those people. And, you know, and then they had the balls to admit to us that it was for Wall Street. Oh, well, yeah, but we had to get Wall Street up and running. Yeah, really? Well, when and Wall then Street you look 10 years later, who screws us in the ass? And who financed the whole thing anything, anyway to begin with? Wall Street. Yeah. So they make themselves look like the victims, and then they're like, well, we got to get back up, uh, you know, on our feet. We're first. So they sacrifice all these kids, mm. all these people, these men, these women. No, it's disgusting. They it's just disgusting behavior. They need to be held accountable. And <clears throat> it's ridiculous that it's taken this long for them to be held accountable for real. Ab absolutely yeah. right. But you know what? What Something positive that comes from her death is the fact that that hopefully some more light has shined on the whole 9-11 ordeal because we, we so often remember that the air is safe to breathe, you know? And how many first responders now suffer from mesothelioma and no, health point. ailments because of it? So hopefully, you know, this helps them champion their cause a little bit. But that's only if somebody keeps the focus on it. Exactly. You know, the mainstream media is not going to do that. The mainstream media is going to, oh, her I, music and I, tributes and all this other crap. 
I was just going to bring that up. Let's watch now and see how many people in the media actually go that far with the story. Oh, yeah, and by the way, she thinks she died from cancer from 9-11. I'll bet you so, none of them mentioned that. Oh, yeah, matter. she died. She was an uh, 63 years old, blah, 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 and RIP. An excerpt from this article. In a 2008 interview with the Daily Telegraph, she said that uh, she had a premonition about the attacks a month beforehand. Afterwards, she said she suffered from severe depression and could not leave her Manhattan flat. Quote, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I had to keep the blinds down and stay in my bedroom. So, I mean, she was there the whole time. And, of course, she believes that because she stayed in her Manhattan flat the whole time, that she was poisoned by the, uh, the dust the, of, of the World Trade Center, which is absolutely right. I mean, they're waiting for them all to die because once yeah. they're all dead, there won't be any more people to sit and complain, and then they can move on and history will forget these people. And that's exactly what's going on because nobody, and there are a few good people out there that are standing up, but as a whole, this country should be ashamed of itself for not, at the very least, somebody should be held accountable for children being sent into a school loaded with toxic dust mm -hmm. where now all of these children are sick they're no, none of them are ever going to have normal lives ever ever we we talked about this the other night when we did the fukushima show it's like you know when there's a massive disaster that the government just cannot handle they're not going to admit fault they're not no. going to admit that everything was as bad as you know we eventually find out because basically for the litigation think about all the, the millions of people that live in new york that breathed that stuff in and the 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 people the the tens the hundreds of thousands and maybe millions of people that will die sometime in the next 50 years because of something they ingested There's so many people yeah. sick and dying already tim it's, mm -hmm. it's oh no you bet i know but i, I mean think about how many more and oh, then, you dude, know, forever for what, ab like what about the fact when they knock buildings down and they're still finding some of that dust yeah it's a real it's it's a real shame you know, there's a, there's a reason why they were called white elephants. There's a reason why that they were condemned, and it's simply because of the cost of abatement. Well, uh, you know, Harry got lucky. If, you know, I oh, mean, sure he did. He got lucky that on in in June of 2001 he got that insurance policy against terrorist attack by airplane. Payment. He got double payment, Joe. Remember, he sued the insurance. He got company. yeah, 14 billion, and he's only sued for seven. It's yeah. like, hey, buy one get one free. Hey, all right. Well, that, that number got debated a lot because he got awarded and then it got cut back. I don't care I, what it got cut back. No, exactly. I, I, I get it. You know, I think, you know, the point is, you know, what he put mere pennies in what? How many? Was it even over a hundred million or was it only 10 million? It, it was it was infinitesimally small. Yes, compared, compared to, to what, what he, he paid for the policy, it. compared to what he got back. At, exactly. Yeah. And what about urban renewal? Because not only did he get his money for the buildings that were destroyed, mm -hmm. he made a killing on them, literally. Okay, now he's got all that land. Remember, there was talk. I don't know if you 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 should remember this, Tim, because and Joe, you're from up north when you were younger, so you remember. I'm sure you might remember this when they talked about urban renewal down there and what they were going to do with that whole area because mm -hmm. they they used to call them like you said, the white elephants. They were this big blight. On the skyline, everybody, you know, now everybody's like, oh, the Twin Towers, the World Trade Center. But back in the day, they were hated. You know, people didn't like them. They were ugly. So there's all this talk of urban renewal and what they're going to do down there and, you know, redoing the whole the whole landscape, uh, or, you know, for a few blocks around there, maybe knocking certain buildings down, putting new buildings up, whatnot. Right. And, and all of a sudden, all this gets taken care of by a bunch of you know, morons with box cutters flying planes into buildings directed from some douchebag on uh, a dialysis, mach dialysis machine in a cave somewhere in Afghanistan. And I'm right. supposed to believe yeah. this. Yeah, now, exactly. Joey made a good point. And, and for those that just might be listening tonight for the first time, you didn't go quite far enough. And Joey mentioned that those buildings were full and the abatement, you know, of those buildings was going to cost a lot of money. What he was referring to was that they were full of asbestos top to bottom and they had to they were ordered they had to clean them up and to clean them up was going to cost billions of dollars and that was not worth it and well end of story so, and then and then court, couple that court to ann coulter she said there was no asbestos in the building oh, so i know man, man, yeah, man take it from coulter. the source 
Exactly. Take anything she says and just flush it down the toilet. But what's what's even more interesting is the fact that on top of that, had they determined that they didn't want to go that route and they wanted to replace the World Trade Centers, could you imagine how much it would cost to do a demolition of the World Trade Centers that would be, A, safe, B, uh, environmentally safe? Mm. You know, it would be so damn expensive that there's no way in heck that they would go through with it. So they got, you know, th this is how they did it. That's how they did it. Yeah. And, and you could choose to believe it or not, but hey, when you put one and one together, it equals two. That's the way it is. And when you put the evidence together, it tells a story. Occam's razor. Yeah, sure. that's right. If you follow Occam's razor and you just look at it and you look at the evidence, you know, what basically what seems more plausible? I, I mean, it, it, there's a little more to it, but that's the basics of what Occam's razor is. What's more plausible? And when you look at the evidence, come on. You know, the thing about 9-11, for every lie they come up with, I can come up with 10 facts to refute that lie. And you guys could, too, and you know it for a fact. That's the way it is. That's right. When we come back, uh, we'll talk about Kodak. It's Kodak having a secret nuclear reactor uh, down in their basement. So we'll be uh, talking about that when we come back from break. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. And if you have a flashing red button on your Kodak camera, don't push it. <laughs> You're right. Oh, I pushed. You'll see the Shoutcast player. Well, that Shoutcast player gives you a, a reliable stream, a much more reliable stream. So uh, tune in using the Shoutcast player, and uh, you can listen to that also on your Roku box. Roku also has a Shoutcast app on there. So uh, check out the Shoutcast player and, you know, compare the two streams. Yep, and don't forget to swing by the page I made for Joe just to copy the code. You don't yes. have to stay there, but copy the code that's there. That's why it's there. It's important you guys copy the code if you have a website and post it on your website, and you will have your own Shoutcast player with the Orion stream, and that would be much appreciated. So if you want to get the code, you can stop by there. Otherwise, head on over to Joe's Orion page. Yes. And our journey uh, tonight takes us to uh, Kodak. And uh, <laughs> this is gizmodo.com. And the title of the article is WTF, Kodak. Kodak has a secret nuclear reactor loaded with enriched uranium hidden in its basement. Yeah, in Rochester. That's awesome. In Rochester, yeah. Kodak may be going under, but apparently they could have started their own nuclear war if they wanted to just six years ago. Down in a basement in Rochester, New York, they had a nuclear reactor loaded with 3.5 pounds of enriched uranium, the same kind they use in atomic warheads. But why did Kodak have a hidden nuclear reactor loaded with weapons-grade uranium? And how did they get permission to own it, let alone install it in a basement in the middle of a densely populated city? Nobody really knows. Kodak officials now admit that they never made any public announcement about it. In fact, nobody in the city, officials, police, or firemen, or in the state of New York, or anywhere else knew about it until it was recently leaked by an ex-employee. Its existence and whereabouts were purposely kept vague, and only a few engineers and federal employees really knew about the project. It's extremely strange that Kodak managed to get something like this, according to Miles Pomper from the Center of Nonproliferation Studies in Washington. Quote, it's such an odd situation because private companies just don't have this material. While three and a half pounds of weapons-grade uranium is not enough to create a nuclear bomb, illegal arm merchants are seeking small amounts like this to put them for sale in the black market, which is why the United States has such a tight control on this material. The government doesn't want Iran or Al-Qaeda getting their hands all over the atomic candy for obvious reasons. Kodak's purposes for the reactor wasn't sinister. They used it to check materials for impurities as well as neutron radi radiography testing. The reactor is a pizza oven. <laughs> yes, the reactor, a Californium <laughs> neutron flux multiplier, was acquired in 1974 and loaded with three and a half pounds of enriched uranium plates placed around a Californium 252 core. The reactor was installed in a closely guarded, two foot thick, concrete walled underground bunker in the company's headquarters where it was fed testing using a pneumatic system. Uh, according to the company, no employees was ever in contact with the reactor. Apparently, it was operated by atomic fairies and unicorns. <laughs> it wasn't until 2006, well, after the terrorist attacks of 
that they decided to dismantle it. Isn't that interesting, fellas? Amazing. I, I love how nobody knows about this. This this is like that, that police department. This came out the other day. Well, possibly like, your police dad department, it, right? Yeah, my father worked for Eastman Kodak when I was a kid. He he has no idea ever that there was ever such a thing in the basement. Nobody knows anything about this. How the hell do you build a reactor <laughs> in a basement and nobody knows about it? But our government's inept, Joe. They God could never knows. pull. We're they could never pull nine eleven off, right? Nah. Yeah. No. We're going to go to war for, you know, World War Three for Iran getting a nuclear missile or a nuclear weapon, and yet Kodak's got it, you know. <laughs> well, but do you see, do you see what I, my point about the government being inept, Tim, is that everybody says, oh, the government can never pull this kind of stuff off. Really? Well, apparently somebody in the government had to know because, I'm, you know, they, they just don't hand that stuff out to just anybody. They so, don't. Why yes. would why the the other question is why the hell would, did Kodak have it? I know one of their excuses. Well, there's I think, always been the CIA film. Right? What was that? Didn't they said they wanted to develop film or something like that? No, man, it was just a test okay. stuff. That's what it was for. It was testing. Yeah. Well, testing what? The, the CIA link too, you know, guys. Yeah, testing. It was testing. It testing was what? Testing. Uh, well, testing. When the hell is Kodak testing uh, uh, using any type of nuke technology at all? Uh, they used it to check materials for impurities as well as neutron radiography testing. But for what? Well, because you need neutrons for radiography <laughs> testing. You know, again, let me. Why does Kodak? even have this and tim makes a good point we're ready to send people to go kill and die because iran oh my god they might yeah. have one and here we've got one just hanging out in kodak's basement yeah. up in kodak's rochester new one. york <laughs> it's great in the chat room maybe kodak was working on a nuclear flash cube <laughs> it could be god only knows right <laughs> could you imagine your camera that you never have to put batteries in again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. And, of course, today, folks, uh, uh, the Senate, Senators unveil uh, the Expatriate Act to respond to Facebook Saverin's tax scheme. Now, there's some, uh, there's some funny stuff about this article. And everybody knows that tomorrow the IPO for Facebook is going down. And it's estimated uh, that the, the the people that own the majority of Facebook are going to make somewhere in the range of $104 billion off of this. Well, this guy sure ends up being about $4 billion when all is said and done. So he's, 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 he's living in squalor. But um, Senator Chuck Schumer has a status update for Facebook co-founders Eduardo Saverin. Stop attempting to dodge your taxes by renouncing your U.S. citizenship or never come back to the U.S. again. Damn, that sounds just like Schumer. Can we tell Schumer to get out of the country? Hey, yeah. Schumer, why are you blowing the IRS? Do you even know anything, Schumer? Oh, that's right, you do, because you probably want a chunk of that money, you dirtbag. That's why you're all upset. Yeah, now here's, here's the interesting thing, right? This is an ABC News piece. And, and Tim and I were talking about this before the show. And it just seems to me that this, this is fluff. This is kind of just thrown out there to distract. Yeah, and the reason is because is the numbers don't even add up. Yeah. You know, if he makes $4 billion on this IPO, let me, let me just give you, this is math 101, okay? The, the income tax rate, just alone, the hell with capital gains tax. Let's just talk about income tax. The income tax rate in this country for somebody that makes $4 billion in one year is 39.5%. So 39.5% of $4 billion. Now, you probably got some donations going there, some charity. You probably diverted some funds around. So let's just say he Mitt Romney'd it down to, say, oh, 10 to 15%. Well, they say, ABC News, that... This will help him duck out of $67 million in taxes. But on $4 billion, yeah. 10%, let's just say you multiply 67 times 10, and you get 670. Well, a 10%, uh, that, would, or that would be $670 million. That's 10% 
would be $67 million. But we're talking $4 billion. Yeah. So the real amount is anywhere from $660 billion to over $1 billion mm-hmm. in tax revenue that would be lost if he changes his citizenship. Now, that there is extremely shysty. You know, just $67 million, you know, people are like, well, you know, $67 million. Well, why would you do that for $67 but million? But that's his money. It is. It's it's yeah, his money. Again, it's not for, let me, let, let, yeah. let, 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 let's, let's not forget, okay? I don't care what, it doesn't if, if this guy's funding something with the New World Order, and then, then he's a shady bastard and needs to be thrown into a pit of fire, okay? But if it's really just his money, and he doesn't want to give it to the scumbag Federal Reserve. Power to the guy. And Amen to that. Fuck Schumer for being such a drooling scumbag vulture. I want your money, and I'm going to work with the Federal Reserve and the IRS to get you. That's right. And if if we can't get you in the United States, we're going to get Schmeagel after you, and then <laughs> and then he will get you. Ha ha ha. <laughs> it's just unbelievable right. the lengths that these scumbags will go to. And again, Schumer's not upholding his oath to the Constitution. What he, this is this is out of bounds. This is not his ground. He should mind his own business, sit down, and shut his mouth. But this whole story just smells. It, I, you know, like Joe prefaced, you know, I, it just reeks to high heaven to me of of some sort of you know look the other way kind of story. Kind of well, just when we when we when we come back, Timmy, let's. Uh... Let's let's talk about that and get your opinion on that. Your broadcast for this evening. I can't believe that two hours has come and gone already. Joe Joseph and Tim Watts, our guests, Popeye from FederalJack.com, and down the rabbit hole here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. And our last two subjects of this evening, Warren Buffett, guys, has just gone and bought 63 newspapers. That's right. He made good Thursday on his promise to buy more newspapers, agreeing to buy 63 daily and weekly newspapers in the Southeast for $142 million from financially troubled Media General. Did they list the papers he bought? Wow. Um, <clears throat> I'm that's trying sad. to find that out now, but... Please, because Southeast, that, that's by me, and I need to know, because now I need to point out to people down here and do not read that crap what, what's that line from star wars remember when they blew up the planet it's as if a million voices suddenly cried out in anguish and then <laughs> silence <laughs> right Jesus yes. there goes this, freedom this again. is the same guy that played this the ukulele huh oh yeah yeah that's remember, right remember that like, little incident like, i'll be working on the railroad to the chinese people i mean does it get any more slap in the face to the country of china Anybody that knows history knows that the Chinese were integral in building the railroad in the United States, but as slave labor. Yeah. And isn't it, I'll be working on the railroad, and I mean, just by, by a ass. freaking big globalist. Unbelievable. So, yeah, he buys 63 newspapers, guys. Wow. And uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the largest newspapers in the acquired group, are the Richmond Times Dispatch, which sells about 115,000 copies on weekdays, and 165,000 on Sundays, and the Winston Salem Journal, which sells about uh, 58,000 copies daily and 76,000 on Sundays. Altogether, the 17 daily newspapers sell about 400,000 copies on the weekdays, <clears throat> and um, Media General's total weekday circulation makes it the nation's 16th largest newspaper company. And uh, now a good old-fashioned globalist owns that as well. So you pretty much can bet, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you know the mainstream media is not going to give you the news that you need to know, which is why you really need to get into the alternative media. If, you, if you're just listening to the show, yeah. you're just waking up, then by all means, don't get your, your news from the mainstream media because it's not news at all. It's just We're- propaganda. Yeah, we're not owned by Warren Buffett. Sorry, folks. Yes, it's a damn shame. And usually we're more, uh, I guess, professional or topic-oriented, but tonight we're just free-flowing. <laughs> and Joe and Tim were kind enough to let me come on because I was suffering from what I called rant withdrawal <laughs> because yeah. I was not able to do my show yesterday because I had surgery. So they were kind enough to let me come on and rant and and yell a little bit and kick things around just to... 
to get it out. And I'm kind of cranky today because I'm very sore. So get it out of your system, buddy. Yes, I feel a little better. Thank you. Good, feeling good. Now here's now let me give you the last story of the night. Here we go. (laughs) Maryland cops giving one dollar to drivers with seatbelts. Whoa, 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 what? Yeah, (laughs) this is with seatbelts. With seatbelts. Uh, so you're effed if you do and you're effed if you don't? No, Bowie, Maryland. Some police officers in Maryland will be out Thursday giving cash to drivers wearing their seatbelt. But beware, they may give you a ticket if you don't. Prince George County's police will be at Route 301 in Ballpark Drive in Bowie starting at noon watching passing vehicles. Officers and safety advocates will distribute $1 bills to drivers who had all occupants properly buckled. Those riding without seatbelts will get educational materials and a ticket. You know what? I don't care. That's I'd be bitching. You know, if they give me a buck, I say you had no right to pull me over to give me a damn buck. That's a freaking <laughs> psyop right there. That's it's all that is. Psyop. Yes, let me. I thought I thought I'd give you a dollar. I thought you when when you first said that, I misheard you. I thought you said they were getting charged a dollar. That's why I said, "Wow, you're no. if you're doing your like you're getting charged a dollar." That's like down <laughs> here for wearing an Easter bunny costume. Yeah. Uh, oh, I know. Last month. And I'm people make it seem like it's okay. Easter Bunny and they'd like lean out the car. Look, the Easter Bunny, you know, to, with their kid. And then the Easter Bunny would be telling people around the corner, hey, you know, I'm by a radio, uh, you know, blue Honda Civic license plate number, blah, 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 blah. And then they'd pull the person over. Cha ching. Yeah, now see, maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that might have been well before um, inflation had really, really destroyed our economy. Where you might have been able to go to McDonald's and get a cup of coffee with that dollar. But now, what does that do? Uh, a dollar. <laughs> Thank, thanks, fellas. You can't even get a pack of gum with a paid sticker on it for a dollar. You can't even, well, you know, you can get uh, two packs of the Wrigley, f- the, like, double mint <laughs> that, that, that are 35 cents a pack now. You know, the little five sticks in a pack. But but you know what it buys them, the people that want to do this? It, it buys them something far more important, the fact that people buy into the fact, oh, yeah, it's okay to do that. <laughs> sure, Jack's, it's okay to pull people Jack, Jack's Rocks in the, in the chat room says, oh, yeah, but it'll cost you $4 in gas while you, you're waiting the traffic back up <laughs> because yeah. it's stopping everybody. Oh, so true. Yeah, and, and by the way, you could buy the gum, but it's got aspartame in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Have some tumors. Yeah, so have a have a have a little bit of rat poison with your chewing gum as as you buy it with your your dollar from for wearing your seatbelt. Good good little good little. Story. You want to hear something funny really quick? The other day, wifey and I are at the diner I like to go to. We're sitting there eating. Some guy walks in. He sees me with my tattoos and he gives me the you know the the evil eye like I'm a dirtbag, right? Sits down at the table next to us, and or it's like a booth, and I, he's he's all. Like eyeing me up like I'm I'm a, I'm scum and we, ho, very all hoity toity goes to the waitress. I need sweet and low. And my wife looked at me and she was like, because sometimes you know I'll, I I would say to people if 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 I was in conversation politely in public, hey man, you shouldn't you know use that. I just looked at the guy and I just smiled. I was like, <laughs> enjoy. I'm sure you eat that crap all the time. No wonder you're such an anal retentive douche. <laughs> so who do you got on the program tomorrow night? Fetzer. Jimmy Fetzer. Professor Fetzer. Professor Fetzer. Yes, the he's a professor. Yes. He's an encyclopedia of knowledge. Yes, he is. He's coming that on guy, to talk about Shaddam's death and the, the death of his children. And let being me ask stoked. you, though, is he going to let you say anything on your show? You know what? I don't care. I, I feel like I got hit by a bus, so it's like I, I can just ask Jim a question and let him go. Well, at least you look the way you feel. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Tim Rimshot. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, slow on the draw. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> and then on Sunday, you got Susan Lindauer coming back? Yeah, she's coming back on. We're actually, that's going to be really interesting. She's going to be getting into, uh, she, she got a chance to talk to people while she was, she just came back from Lebanon, and she got a chance to, get like an on the ground idea of how what they what their take is on everything and a lot of them know over there that we're a police state they know we're totally controlled they're like you guys think you're free huh you know yeah, kind of like that that, isn't that the biggest misconception out there hmm. oh yeah you know I'll, especially with active duty military well we're going over there to defend our freedom what, what yeah. freedom 
Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I just drove to a checkpoint where they were checking my license. <laughs> I was just minding my own business. Yeah, that's freedom. Show me your papers, my friend. Show me your papers. I want to see your papers. Yeah, so I'm I, I'm excited. Su Susan was on last Sunday. It was just too much to get into two hours, so I invited her to come back this Sunday. So she was gracious enough to. It's pretty cool. That's awesome, man. So you got a good good couple of shows here coming up. Uh, on Sunday evening, Conspiracy Chronicles comes back again. And, you know, typically Tim and I uh, are, are fairly squared away, and we know in advance what we're doing. But I'm just going to warn you ahead of time. We have no idea what we're going to be talking about on Sunday night. So we're going to be... Uh, we're going to be doing our homework over the next two days trying to figure out what topic it is that we're going to actually... Well, the idea is down. You know, there's so many conspiracies out there. That's trying the problem. To hide the ones right now that are probably the most prevalent to the whole story, you know, that... Exactly. Yeah. And, well, and, and herein lies the problem when you talk conspiracy is that, that you, you always want to try something that, that kind of ties into current events or, or what's going on. So it's always in flux. As a matter of fact, there are some times where we know what we're going to do and then we change it last second just because the events of, of uh, current events change. So it's, uh, it, it'll be an interesting show, to say the least, but that comes on immediately following Down the Rabbit Hole on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And again, you can check out federaljack.com. Thank you, Popeye, for coming out this evening and ranting and hijacking my show. No, thank you for letting me hijack your show. As you can tell, I'm... I'm a little tired. Yes, I, now he's like, thank you so much. Yes, for, I sound wound up. I jack myself. He, he uh, looks better, though, Joe. I mean, you look at him. He looks better. Just, oh, you, yeah. You can I tell mean, the tension's gone just because he got to vent. Well, I also feel a little better, honestly. Like, I can I can move my fingers today and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I see, see you move that, 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 that one pretty good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love that. that. That's fantastic. Although I have to say that... Uh, I'm, I'm glad that the limpress syndrome was 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 cured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I I can tell you I wish that was the problem. <laughs> but it is interesting. I can feel all five of my fingers again, though. Mister Swish. <laughs> <laughs> Such tarts. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen. We can with do friends it. like with Check friends like these, who the hell needs enemies? <laughs> yeah, it, it's like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> jocularity, jocularity. Ah, well, folks, that is the end of the broadcast for this evening. Tune in tomorrow for the next exciting episode of Down the Rabbit Hole, where you'll hear Popeye say, That's your cue, Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I swear. Oh, boy, folks. Good night. We'll see you later.